And I've already created a few built-in reports or reports here that we're going to be using today. And first things first, let's kind of show you where the uh, expression wizard is. I guess that's what it's called, and um, how to find it in your report. So one option is to click in a cell or a, te a text box or whatever you're working with inside of your report, and you can have two options. You can click on here, which will open the expression wizard. And you can see here up here at the top, this is where you'll actually write in your expression code. You have the different categories, and in each category, it'll list all the different items that are available to that category. And as you can see, while I'm clicking up and down over here, there's a description for each item, and it also gives you a sample piece of code down here in the example. So let's kind of step back away from that real quick, and we'll go back over here, we'll go to text box properties. This is the second place where um, you can go to view your expressions. All these little FX buttons, you can click on these and it'll bring up that expression wizard. As I had mentioned just a few minutes ago, that the expressions pretty much control just about everything on your SSRS report. So as you can see here, as we're going down this tab for text box properties, you can see all these little different expression boxes that are popping up. And you can use the expression language to make these all dynamic or you can change it based on your preference. As you can see, as I go down here, those little FX expression buttons are all over the place. Okay, and then also if you go over here to your properties window, over here, just about every single one of these properties over here in your report, you can place an expression on as well. Okay, so just on, enough with that. Now we're just gonna go ahead and start getting into some of the examples. I'm not gonna waste a lot of your time today. And so first things first, you have a section over here called built-in fields over here in your report data pane. And as you can see here, there's several different listings that you can use into your report. Another option to where you can see those also is if you right click, go back over here to your expressions, you can see that's the very second category. And it's the same listing over here in the items. It's just available to you over here in your report data pane. Right. So the first things that we're going to do today is we're going to create a report uh, header for your report. So instead of right-clicking and inserting a text box that's kind of static, you could say like this is my uh, this is my report, which it'll always just kind of be there. It would just be a static text box. What you can do is you can use your built-in field, and you can simply go over here and find your report name, click it, and drag it over here. And now, for whatever instance, if you, your report name ever changes, your text box up here will dynamically change according to your, your uh, report name up here. So like over here and click Preview, you'll now see that my report name is in the header of my report. Or you, know, you can also do the same thing. You can go over here and insert text box, go to your expression, go to your built-in fields, and click on, double-click on report name and then click OK. That's another option to do it as well. It's just that reporting services has made it a little easier for you by uh, having it over here in your built-in fields category. Okay, so that's a pretty simple one. Like I said, we're, in today's session, we're gonna kind of start off simple and kind of work our way up a little bit to more some of the intermediate uh, expressions that you might be using on a daily basis. So another built-in field that I like to use a lot is execution time, which is the first one. We'll simply drag and drop that over here. Span it out, we'll click preview. And as you can see here, it displays the time, the date and timestamp of when the report was actually executed, which is a really nice feature to have so that way you have something to go against to compare your data, you know, when that report was actually run. If, you're sending this out in a subscription and somebody doesn't get a chance to look at it for later in the day, they might know exactly when the report was run. But it's not very self-explanatory. All you do is you see a date and a timestamp up there, but the end users may not necessarily know what that date and time means. So what you can do is that you can actually add some concatenation to there, a string value, and I have my little cheat sheet over here I'm gonna be using today as well. Um, so if I go back over here into this text box, I can go to expressions, and as you can see here, we're going to add on the report generated on with the execution time. So whenever it's displayed in that page header, it'll literally say report generated on November 29th, 2011 at 11.10 a.m. And in order to do that concatenation, you'll use this and sign. 
or the ampersand sign, or you, sometimes you can get away with using the plus sign, but sometimes you'll run into data type uh, issues with that, so I kind of like to use the ampersand sign. And in order to add the text in there, you have to use your double quotes, as you can see here, and then you just put in your string value that you want to display. And then what I do is typically after the on, I do a couple spaces, so that way there's a little bit of a padding there uh, inside of your report header. So if we go back over here and click OK and preview this report, you can see now it says report generated on, and it gives a little bit more meaning to just having the date and timestamp on your report. I can spread that out a little bit further and preview it again, make sure it looks a little nicer. Now the next feature, let's say our uh, report, in our report, we're, the space is very limited, and we don't like how that report generated on with the timestamp takes so much, so much space, it's so long in your report. There's another little nifty tool that we can use inside of the expression language, and that is going to be this expression right here. We'll jump back over here to bids, and we'll alter this expression real quickly. And what it's doing is we're going to use that same string that says report generated on, and we're going to use our same built-in fields, which is the execution time, but we're going to use this VB function right here. And what that stands for, it stands for Visual Basic Carriage Return Line Feed. And basically all that's going to do is going to put the report generated on one line and the execution on the next line. So there's a little bit of uh, cleans it up and it doesn't take up as much horizontal space on your report. So we go back over here and we click preview again. Now you can see that our date and timestamp has been bumped down to the second line. That's a pretty nifty little feature that I use a lot in, in their expressions and on the reports that I work on. All right, and so the next item that we'll be covering today of the built-in fields, and this will be uh, almost the next to last are the page numbers. So as you can see over here, we have, uh, let's see, total pages, and then we can have page number. And we'll preview this report once again, go to the very last page. And as you can see here, we are currently displaying page 10 of 10. But again, you know, we can always clean that up with our expression language, just like when we did up here with our uh, date and timestamp for the execution time. We can go back over here and we can concatenate those pieces together with a string word of of so that it gives a little bit more meaning and it makes it a little bit more cleaner on the report and makes it a little bit of understanding for the, uh, the end users. We'll insert a uh, text box, go to our expression, we'll paste this in here. And as you can see here, we're using our built-in fields of the page number concatenating it with the string of of, and then concatenating it again with the total pages.